Hi geometry classes, this is a circle unit lesson 9 and today we're going to talk about recognizing equations of circles. So the difference today is going to be the equation of a circle is going to be in a different form so we're going to have to take that form and put it into the form that we can um, recognize and work with a little bit more easily. So first we're going to look at some polynomials and their factored form. So if we're looking at x squared plus 2x plus 1, the factored form is x plus 1 squared. Now why is that? If I was going to go and factor this trinomial, x times x is x squared, and then I'm looking at the factors of 1. Well, the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. How are those factors going to give me a positive 2 as a middle term? Because remember, these numbers, they multiply to the last term and they add together to the middle term. Well, it would have to be positive 1 and positive 1. So you can see I have two factors that are exactly the same. I just write that as x plus 1 squared. So now let's do the next one, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Well, if x times x is x squared, all right? Now I'm looking for the factors of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. How are they going to give me a positive 4 as a middle term if it's positive 2 and positive 2? Those factors are the same, so I can just write them as x plus 2 squared. So all these problems that I'm going to work with today, the factors are exactly the same. So you can see they're going to, um, I can write them as, like I did here, x plus 2 squared. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Let's do one that has a negative sign. So x times x is x squared. 3 times 3 is 9, all right? But I need a negative 6 as a middle term, so it's going to be negative 3 and negative 3, all right? So that multiplies to positive 9, but adds together to negative 6. So it's just x minus 3 squared, okay? Um, I just want to point out something. All of these middle terms and what all of these numbers came out to be. All right, all of those numbers came out to be half of that b term. All right, remember it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So they came out to be half. All right, let's work the other way. If I have x plus 4 and I want to square it, all right, now you don't have, to, I just want to show you if anybody's having trouble, that's x plus 4 times x plus 4. So you're foiling that, and that's x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16, and so it's x squared plus 8x plus 16. That's the answer. If you can do that all in your head, that's perfectly fine. I was writing it out for anybody who was struggling with it. So x minus 7 squared means x minus 7 times x minus 7, and that's x squared minus 7x minus 7x plus, 4, plus 49, Right? I'm just foiling that, so x squared minus 14x plus 49. All right? You should feel comfortable working with these factored forms and these polynomials. And then the last one, x squared minus 20x plus 100. Let's just see if we could do it. If I'm following the same format as before, I just have to take half of that middle term, and it's going to be x minus 10 squared. And let's just check x minus 10, x minus 10, are those the factors? Yep, they sure are, because I'm looking for the factors of 100 that will also combine to give me negative 20. All right, the standard form of an equation is the one that we were working with yesterday, all right? Today, we're going to have a general form, so x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. So I'm going to take that general form and I want to put it into standard form so that I can recognize the center and the radius. All right, so let's see what's going to happen here. In exercise one, I want to find the center and the radius. So look what I have. I have this nice trinomial here. And let me grab a different color. I have this nice trinomial here. So I'm going to take those trinomials just like I did before. In fact, I have this one, x squared plus 4x plus 4. I have that right here up above. It factors to x plus 2 squared. And y squared minus 6y plus 9, I actually have that up above too. Whoops, right here. I mean, I have it with x's, but it's the same thing. 
So it was x minus 3 squared, so this is just going to be y minus 3 squared. Okay, there's still that plus sign in between. So I now took that different form, all right, and I wrote it in standard form. Now I can recognize what the center and the radius are. The center, those are the numbers next to the x and the y, but remember, you have to change those signs, so it's negative 2, 3. And the number on the right is the radius squared, so my radius is the square root of 36, which is 6. Okay? All right, let's look at the next one. x squared minus 10x plus 25. Well, I have to factor that. The factors are going to be x minus 5, x minus 5, but again, they're matching factors, so I'm just going to write it as x minus 5 squared. And then I'm going to do the y's, y squared plus 14y plus 49. So that's going to be, all I'm really doing is taking half of this 14. Half of 14 is 7, so y plus 7 squared. So my center Oops, my center is going to be positive 5, negative 7. Don't forget to change the signs. And the number on the right is the radius squared, so the radius is the square root of 4, which is 2. All right, so not bad so far. Let's look at the next one. Find the center and the radius of this circle. Well, here's a problem because I don't have a trinomial. So let's look at what I have. I have x squared plus 4x. I'm going to leave a gap. And then I have y squared minus 12y. I'm going to leave a gap. So here's what we're going to do. You did this before in algebra. I'm going to complete the square. All right? I'm going to make this a trinomial that I'll be able to factor just like I was factoring on the other side. So I'm going to do this in a different color. All you do to complete the square, so that's what I'm doing in example two, I take half of 4 is 2, and I square it. So half of 4 is 2, but 2 squared is 4, so I'm adding on 4. Now here's the deal. Whatever you add on to the left, you have to add on to the right, because this is an equation. I'm going to take half of negative 12 is negative 6, but I'm squaring it. Negative 6 squared is 36, so I'm adding on 36. All right. Now that, I'm going to put this back here. So now I'm looking at x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now I can factor it. It factors to x plus 2 squared. And I'm going to look at y squared minus 12y plus 36. Now I can factor it. Half of negative 12 is negative 6, so it's y minus 6 squared. And I have to add everything on the right. 41 plus 4 is 45. 45 plus 36 is 81. So you see, now I put it in standard form. My center is going to be negative 2, positive 6, and my radius is 9. Okay, so if these, this one was different than the last one we did. The last one already had the trinomial. So here I'm completing the square, all right, making it a trinomial that I can factor. All right. Could the circle with the equation x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 7 have a radius of 4? Why or why not? Well, the only way to do it is to get it into that standard form. So x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave that, but I'm going to leave a gap. Now the y squared is actually perfect. All right, I'm just going to leave y squared just like that. I don't have to make it a trinomial. And I'm going to bring this negative 7 over to the other side and make it positive 7. Now I will have to complete the square for the x's. So half of negative 6 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. Remember, whatever I add on to the left, I have to add on to the right. All right, now I'm going to factor that. Now that it's a trinomial, I'm going to factor half of negative 6 is negative 3. So this right here factors to x minus 3 squared. The y squared is perfect. 7 plus 9 is 16. Now, all I really cared about was the radius. I don't care about the center on this one. The center happens to be positive 3, 0, but I only care about the radius. Six, that number on the right is the radius squared. So if the radius squared is 16, then the radius is 4. So my answer is yes. They wanted to know if that was the radius. 
All right, this one, example four, is definitely harder. A circle with a center 2, negative 5 is tangent to the x-axis. What's the radius of this circle? All right, so we got to think about what that word tangent meant. The center is 2, negative 5. So the center is right here. If it's tangent to the x-axis, we did that in the first part of this chapter. If it's tangent to the x-axis, then it is touching the x-axis in one point only. So that means that the radius of the circle, and I didn't draw a very pretty circle, sorry about that. All right, so if it's tangent to the x-axis, it touches the x-axis at one point only, the radius equals, and I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, the radius equals five. All right, so it has a radius of five. Now that I know the radius, I can write the equation of my circle. So it's going to be x minus 2 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals the radius squared, and the radius is 5. All right, so that one was a little bit different. Given a circle centered at the origin and goes through the point 0, 2, determine whether or not this circle would go through the point 1, negative 2. 1 comma radical 3. All right, so let's, uh, it has a center at the origin, and it goes through the point 0, 2. So let me just draw a little picture so you can see this. So center at the origin goes through the point 0, 2. All right, well, that means it has a radius of 2. All right, and let's write the equation then. If it has a radius of 2, whoops, I missed right there. So it has a radius of 2. That means the equation would be x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared, which is 4. All right, if I want to know if it goes through the point 1, negative 1 radical 3, I'm just going to plug in 1 for x, and I'm going to plug in radical 3 for y. I'm going to test it out to see if that actually works. 1 squared is 1. Radical 3 squared is just 3. So there we go, yes. Okay, so I'm testing out the point. First I have to write the equation, and then I test out the point. All right. And last one, the graph of the equation of the circle below, identify the center and the radius of the circle. So this is one more completing the square. So let's take those x terms, put them together. Let's take those y terms and put them together. And this single, this negative 8, I'm going to bring it over to the other side. I want to basically start with a clean slate before I complete the square. I don't want any other numbers on that side. So half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So I'm adding on 25. That means i got to add on 25 to the right. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. All right, now I have this nice trinomial that I'm going to factor, and it's going to be, let me go back to the other color. Uh, there's a plus sign there. X plus 5 squared, and then I have this trinomial that factors. That's going to be Y minus 4 squared, and then I have to add 8 plus 25 plus 16. Well, that's 49. Okay, but now that it's in that standard form, my center of the circle is negative 5, positive 4, and my radius of my circle is 7. All right, so we would, all we're doing is taking what we learned from the day before, and I am now completing the square so I can get that circle into standard form. And, of course, we'll practice that tomorrow.